So I feel like this isn't talked about nearly as much as it should be. So let's get into it, yeah? Hey, what's good? It's Ina. Hajimashite, watashi wa Ina to moshimasu. Ina mitai desu. Majime ni nihongo wo benkyo suru no wa mou san, yonen kan gurai deshita. Watashi ga 19 sai no toki ni お、日本語能力試験のエンツのレベルを受けました。合格できました。お、正直、ちょっとご存知ハクセンルって韓国人もに、そうそう。お、韓国語も上手ですね。日本語も上手ですね。日本語も上手ですね。日本語も上手です
language learning. Now, language learning is a lot more difficult, it's not as effortless, and it takes a lot of intentional work. If anything, this should tell you that you should start earlier. Earlier is better. So if you're 27 and you want to learn a language, start now. Do it. And if you want to start right, I suggest you start by building perceptual ability to differentiate between the sounds or the speech sounds in the language that you are learning. So tips for learning to identify new phonemes. Listen. Listen, listen, listen. Whether it be to recordings or TV shows or a friend who can speak the language, take the time, devote the time to hearing this language and picking apart these new sounds. Ask your friend to single out a sound if you're having trouble with a vowel or a certain consonant. If you're listening to Japanese audio, which you should if you're learning Japanese, notice the sounds that come up often. Babies have a perceptual advantage, but they also have environmental ones. They are playfully spoken to in more digestible ways, and they're spoken to a lot. With enough language input and careful attention, you should be able to improve your ability to perceive and differentiate between these speech sounds over time. Now, another tip I would recommend is to learn the writing system of the language that you're learning. Now, whether or not you want to become literate, I think this is an excellent sub goal to achieve. And I've never had a student complain about learning the writing system, and over just a few sessions, too. Now, here's the why. When you're building a new speech sound inventory and you've moved on to learning grammar structures and vocabulary, you're going to need a way to write these new words down. It can become messy and confusing if you continue with your own writing system. By learning the writing system of the language that you're learning, you widen the material that you're able to study, you better commit these sounds to memory, and you add a very practical tool to your skill set. So when I picked up Hangul in high school, I hardly knew any Korean. I basically learned Hangul before Hangulmar, um, or I learned the writing system before I learned how to speak Korean at all. And I knew that if I wasn't going to use it, I was going to forget it. So lo and behold, I started uh, writing my notes in class in the Korean alphabet. And from this activity, I realized that I could practice two things. First, I was able to practice differentiating between Korean and North American English sounds. For example, if I wanted to write the word again, I asked, would a Korean speaker say again or again? Second, I practiced writing Korean and I better committed these sounds to memory. Now let's move on to tips on learning how to articulate new phonemes. What do you do when you're having difficulty uh, articulating a new speech sound? Which you very likely will. Well, a good question to start with is what are good questions to start with when trying to figure out how to articulate a new sound? Now there are three main ways in which linguists characterize different speech sounds in North American English. We look at manner of articulation, place of articulation, and whether or not a speech sound is voiced or voiceless. Now, manner of articulation has to do with the way air is released from your mouth in order to produce a speech sound. The sounds t, f, and r all have different manners of articulation. T, t, t is a stop because you're holding air in your mouth before you release it in order to produce a sound. You can give it a try. T, t, b, d, and k are also stops. F is a fricative because you are continuously releasing air uh, in order to produce the sound. V, v, the v, or v as in violet, um, is also a fricative. The r, r sound is an approximant because you are creating a small space in your mouth through which air flows. Now there are many manners of articulation. Many, many, many manners of articulation. Phonology and phonetics, which are subdisciplines of linguistics, are dedicated to studying speech sounds, and students head to grad school to broaden the field full time. That being said, you don't have to know all the manners of articulation. You don't even have to know their names. I just want you to understand that you are manipulating the way air flows out of your mouth in order to produce a speech sound. So a good question to ask is, how is air being manipulated how is air being released from my mouth in order to produce a speech sound? Or how should air be manipulated? Or how should air flow out of my mouth in order to produce this particular speech sound? Moving on, place of articulation has to do with, well, where the sound is being articulated exactly in the mouth. B and P are easily identifiable. They're bilabials because both the upper and the lower lips are used in conjunction to produce a sound. T 
is an alveolar sound because it's being articulated right behind your teeth at the alveolar ridge, something we call the alveolar ridge. You can give it a shot. T, t, t. K and ga, k and ga are velar sounds because they're being articulated at your soft palate, what we call the velum, which is right around the top of your throat. Again, absolutely no need to know the names of these things. Just understand that sounds in certain languages are articulated in specific places in the mouth. So a good question to ask is, where exactly is this sound being articulated in the mouth? Finally, we have voicing. Now touch your throat. When you say bat, bat, you should feel your vocal cords vibrating right at the b, b, b sound. Now say p, p, p. You shouldn't feel your vocal cords vibrating. And if you do, when you say the word pat, that should be attributed to the a, uh, a uh sound uh, because vowels are typically voiced. So b, b, bat versus p, p, pat. Do you notice that b and p both have the same manners of articulation and places of articulation. They're both bilabial stops. They only differ in that B or the B sound is voiced and the P, P, P sound is voiceless. Now consonants are produced quite differently from vowels with manner of articulation and voicing being not very helpful characterizations when it comes to differentiating them. Vowels are typically voiced, which is again to say that your vocal cords are vibrating when you articulate them, and they're all pretty much articulated in the same way. So instead, we categorize vowels according to their place of articulation. How high or low in the mouth is the vowel sound being articulated, how front or back, and whether or not your tongue is rigid when you are articulating them. We also pay attention to how spread the lips are or how rounded the lips are. Are your lips spread like in the North American English E, E, or rounded like in the North American English vowel O, O, E, O. The North American English A, as an apple, for example, has a more front and low position in the mouth with unrounded lips and a rigid tongue. A, A, apple. You can give it a shot. Apple, apple. Where do you feel the sound being articulated in your mouth? Now, if you look at the Japanese uh, uh, as in apuru, apuru, the sound uh, uh, has a more central position in the mouth relative to the a uh sound in North American English. Apple versus apuru, apuru. Apple, apuru. Again, this is just scratching at the surface of phonology, but I think there are some helpful tips here to get you started on asking more productive questions when it comes to articulating new sounds. In other languages, for example, tone makes a meaningful difference. For example, in Mandarin and in Thai. Aspiration, which is the releasing of a puff of air when you articulate a new sound, makes an important difference in other languages, like in Korean. When you start learning a new language, I suggest you ask things like, what are important factors to pay attention to in differentiating speech sounds? If you'd like to dive into this topic more deeply, I suggest you look into the International Phonetic Alphabet, or the IPA. They have online sources available, and it's a very interesting study. Um, if you're able to learn the IPA, I think it would be even easier to learn a variety of languages, not just one. I'm referencing this down in the description below. Now you might ask, why start with learning speech sounds at all when language learning? Can't I just wing it? The thing is, if you go straight into language learning without first learning the speech sounds, and you start building vocabulary and grammar structures, you're potentially going to reinforce an inaccurate accent. Now, there's nothing wrong with a foreign accent, really. The brain is amazing in that it's able to perceive different sounds to a degree and apply those equivalencies between languages pretty much systematically and on the fly. But if you're looking to really maintain the integrity of this new language that you're speaking and to speak as accurately and as fluently as possible, I think this is a very good place to start. Every language is made up of speech sounds. Every word, it's made up of individual phonemes. And it's a very real possibility that you'll run into some problems as you're communicating with a native speaker of the language that you're learning. For example, if you've got a North American O, and you say coco instead of coco, not understanding that there is an important difference between long vowels and short vowels in Japanese, 
and you're asking directions, let's say you're, you want to say, Koko wa doko desu ka? and instead you say, Koko wa doko desu ka? you might end up getting the address of a nearby high school as opposed to your current location. So let's do a quick recap. The first step to learning a new language is to build an entirely new speech sound inventory for the language that you're learning. This takes at least listening to as much language input as possible. It's also helpful to learn the designated writing system of the language that you're learning. There are helpful questions that you can ask when trying to articulate a new sound. You can ask, how is air being released from my mouth in order to produce a sound? Where exactly in the mouth is the sound supposed to be articulated? How high or low is the vowel being produced in the mouth? How front or back is my tongue rigid? Finally, just have fun with it. There's a lot to gain from language learning. I've personally really enjoyed it, and I'm not a fan of the language learning is arduous and difficult. Like, yes, it's difficult. Yes, it's a lot to learn, but it can also be a lot of fun. And there's a lot to gain from the scientific perspective when it comes to helping us learn more wisely how to acquire a new language. Whew. Uh, I know that was a lot. <laughs> if you made it to the end of this video, thank you so much for watching. I hope you found it helpful. And if you did and would like to see the next video, uh, please hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Again, this is part of a series that I'll be doing on language learning from a scientific perspective. And I'll be borrowing insights from psychology, particularly cognitive psychology and developmental psychology and linguistics and psycholinguistics. So yeah, hope y'all are having a good one. This is Ina.